Higher end lasers often have a camera or a laser pointer so you know exactly where it's going to be engraving or cutting. The K40 turns this a little bit more into a guessing game. Here's the way I set up my projects so I know exactly where I'm engraving. So I'm going to start by covering my platform with masking tape. And this will give me a clean surface so I can make my marks. So maybe we want to engrave some of these ceramic tiles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the measurements, which is a little bit under 4 inches square. And then in Inkscape, I'm going to create a square. And I'm going to hold down the control button and that will constrain the aspect ratio. Select the pointer tool. I'm going to have the lock between the width and the height. And I'm going to type in 4 inches. And that will be our size. Now depending on what kind of engraving or cutting you're doing, uh, you could choose either a red or blue outline. Um, since I'm going to be doing some engraving, uh, I'm going to choose red. Uh, so I'm going to right click on red and set the stroke and that will give us our outline. And now what we could do is we could paste in our image. Uh, maybe we want something like... something like this and we'll just shrink it down. And I think something like that looks pretty good. So I'm going to resize my document and go to document properties and then under document properties resize page to content and click the the button and that resizes our document to the proper size. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that to my desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and engrave this uh, I think for this, uh, for the vector cut, uh, I'm just going to set that at 20 millimeters uh, per second at 5 milliamps. Uh, that'll just make a perimeter around my coaster so I know where to put the coaster. And as long as I don't move anything, I should be able to line this up and do several batches. And that looks pretty good. So on to the next tile. So maybe we want to do something a little bit different. I have these little one inch circle tiles. Uh, maybe we want to make a few, uh, a few coins for the kids to count out. Uh, so in this case, maybe we want to do a small batch of them. These are one inch circles. So I'm just going to create a circle, hold down the control that constrains the aspect ratio so it doesn't turn into a, um, a oval or anything and then uh, switch it over to inches and then I know that these are one inch so I'm going to lock the aspect ratio type in one inch and now we have our circles so I'm going to keep that as a red stroke since I'm not going to be using it as cutting I'm just going to use it as a way to mark uh, my platform let's put five cents in there five five cents I'm going to take these and I might want to add a uh, vector engraver on the edge. So I'm going to select both five and cents and then come down here to my blue and set my stroke. Uh, that way it gives me the option of adding a outline to uh, crispen up the, uh, the engrave. I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to group them, control G, D, or control G, duplicate them, uh, control D, and then what we'll do is we'll just kind of set We'll do six of them. And then we'll come up here to File, Document Properties, reset our page size. So resize page to content, click this button, it resizes everything. And then I'm just gonna call this file, I'm gonna call this Coins. This is a little batch file that we could uh, do a whole bunch at the same time. So I'm opening up my Coins file here. And again, it's going to Set the vector cut at 20 millimeters per second, 5 milliamps. Uh, all I want to do is mark a little area on my platform so I know where to put the coins. Uh, so we're going to do a batch of these. And then after I get this batch done, I could remove uh, these engraved files and then uh, uh, put some more coins in there and do another batch. So let's give this a try.
and then we come back with a vector engraved to clean up the edges of our raster engraved. That turned out pretty good. And now on to our next patch. So maybe we have something a little bit more of an irregular shape, kind of like these little discs that I cut from a branch. Maybe we'll turn these into some uh, Christmas ornaments. So what we could do is just get the average size of where you want your artwork. It's about two and a half inches by, let's just call it two and a half inches square. So I'm gonna do a circle. Again, I'm gonna hold down the control button as I create my circle. And I'm going to make this two inches square. So let's lock the aspect ratio 2.5 inches square. And I'm going to again use the red uh, to mark my out outer perimeter. So I'm going to set that stroke to red. Now, since this technically isn't two and a half inches wide and tall, it's going to be kind of hard to. Um, line that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, uh, this circle. I'm going to duplicate it and on my duplicate I'm going to make uh, another circle that's a little bit larger and maybe once again make one that's even just a tish bit larger than that. Uh, that way it kind of gives me an opportunity to kind of center the uh, this irregular shape uh, just by kind of eyeballing it and putting it into the center. I'm going to add one additional element though. I'm going to add a crosshairs. So I'm going to select my line tool and I'm just going to make a uh, line. So click, hold down the control, click, and then hit enter. I'm going to select my pointer tool. Again, I'm going to make this red and I'm going to duplicate this and rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm going to select all the shapes and then I'm going to center them all. And this will give me an additional crosshair in order to uh, view what I'm trying to do. And then we could go ahead and paste in our design, maybe this little Noel. And I'm going to try to keep it on the inside circle because that's my safe area right there is on the inside. So I'm just going to put it right there. Uh, again, I'm going to select this and put a blue stroke all around the edge so I could kind of clean things up when I engrave it. Again, we'll resize the page to the size of the drawing and then we'll go ahead and save our file. Again, I'm going to use the vector cut at 20 millimeters per second. I'm also going to use 5 milliamps. And what that's going to do is create this little targeted bullseye. And that kind of allows me to kind of eyeball each one of these uh, ornament um, uh, slices, these little wood slices. And we're doing a raster engrave from the bottom up. And then we outline with a vector engrave. And that's looking pretty good. So let's put on the next one. For items that don't really require a precise placement, my air assist comes down far enough where it's close enough to the workpiece where I could kind of eyeball it and know where it's going to put my design. So if I click the test switch, I have a rough idea where it will fire in relation to my air assist. So in these instances, I could place it wherever I think I might like it and then click engrave. And it gets close enough to where I want it. So that's how I line up my items that I'm going to be engraving. And it works pretty well for me. I'm able to batch out a large number of items and get the same repeatable results. And for now, it works great. At some point, I will upgrade the K40 to include a camera for alignment. But until then, this method works great. I hope you found this video useful. If you found it helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. That really helps me out an awful lot. And if you like what I do, please subscribe. I'd love to have you on board. Be sure to check out some of my other videos too. That's all I got for this time. Thanks for watching you guys. Bye.